Griffin here with Nelson Treehouse and Supply and today I'm going to teach you how to frame a rake wall with a door and a window. <laughs> Actually it's this wall. A quick disclaimer before we get started is that uh, we're putting this together for educational purposes. Uh, I'm going to actually break down the math and explain to you and show you how we uh, come up with our dimensions. I could give you a cut list of dimensions but then if your project is any bit different than what we're doing here, it's not going to work and I'm not actually explaining to you how to do your project. Uh, so the hope is that you can take what we give you and uh, take that information, put it into your project and make it your own. Alright, let's go. So to get started today, you're going to need a pile of 2 by 4 You can figure out how much you need. Um, and something to fasten the 2 by 4s uh, together with. We use a lot of screw product screws. These are just a basic number 10 by 3 inch screw. Uh, we also nail things together. You'll see me using a nail gun and a hammer. Obviously you need something to drive the screws. Um, use a speed square quite a bit and a pencil to mark the wood, otherwise you're just guessing. You'll see me cutting everything uh, on a miter saw, but a skill saw works just as well. So here's a sketch of what we're going to do today. It's just a little 8 foot by 8 foot square uh, tree house, kind of like what you know I'd love to do for my kids. And I'm going to focus on this wall right here, and I'll show you how we do how we frame for a door and a window. And then this is called a rake wall because it starts lower and ends up higher. And here's the floor plan. Like I said, it's 8 foot by 8 foot. And there's a bunch of dimensions over here we'll use. This is the wall right here that we're gonna that we're gonna frame. Uh, we've got a dimension that takes you from outside a wall to center a window. We have a, a window rough opening size, so that's the size we'll actually frame the hole for the window to. We've got a dimension that tells us where the edge of our hole is for the door. And we have a door size. And this is the actual size of the door slab. So what we will end up uh, doing is we'll frame it two inches wider and three inches taller to leave plenty of room for the, the jam and the threshold and all of that because you really don't want to fight to try and get the door in. It's better to leave it a little bit big and shim it. So the first step is going to be to cut our bottom plate and our top plate. Okay, so to figure out our bottom plate, what you do is you take your overall dimension, which is eight feet, and you subtract this wall and this wall because the wall we're gonna frame sits inside of those. So if this is three and a half inches and three and a half inches, that's a total of seven inches, from eight feet, which will leave you with seven foot five. Now that we have our bottom plate figured out, we are able to figure out our top plate. Uh, we have a six inch pitch, which means that for every 12 inches it comes across, it comes up six inches. Now you could use Pythagorean's theorem to figure out the length of your top plate, but I'm just gonna punch into a calculator because it's faster. So our calculations gave us eight foot, three and a half inches, long to short, because the, the plate will be cut on a bevel. Now that we know our plate dimensions, we'll go over to the chop saw and cut them. Okay, so a 612 is 26.57 uh, degrees of angle. Uh, I'll just go 20, 26 and a half is plenty close, so. Okay, so I've got my bottom plate and my top plate, and I like to put them up on sawhorses to do layout just because I don't want to bend over. All right, when you're laying out plates on a rake wall, I always lay out the bottom plate first, uh, just because it's easy. And then once we have some of those dimensions, we can calculate where stuff goes on the top plate. You always want to start with your openings first. So for example, you want to start with your door and window, and then you can fill in your studs after that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is mark out the center of our window. We've got a dimension here of two foot, three and a half, but you have to remember that's to the outside. So we would lose three and a half inches off of that, which will leave us at two feet. So now that we have our center point, we can lay out the two sides of our windows. If we're 21 and a half inches wide, that'll be 10 and three quarter inches um, on either side of our center. So the mark I put originally is right on this inside line. And then I left a space for a trimmer or a cripple and then this is what's called a king stud. Now that we've done the window, we're gonna go ahead and lay out the door. Uh, if you recall, the dimension was nine inches from the outside of the building, uh, which means we have to lose three and a half inches for the plate that's gonna go right here, and that'll leave us with five and a half inches. 
now that I know one edge of the door, I can measure and, uh, and find the other edge. I'm gonna burn an inch. And if my door is two foot eight, then I wanna actually have a two foot 10 rough opening, which is 34 inches. And if I'm burning an inch, that means I have to mark it at 35. So I went ahead and marked uh, my trimmer, which is the part that carries your header, and then the king studs on, on the outside of that. Now that we laid out our openings, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and lay out studs. We're framing on a two foot center, um, and that's just to keep it light. You can frame it on a 16 inch center, but it would just make it heavier, and since this is just a tree house, let's just keep it as light and simple as possible. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set my tape here at three and a half inches, and that's because there's another plate for another wall that comes here, and I actually want my plywood to be able to lap. And so I'm gonna set this, my first mark here will be at 23 and a quarter, so that the center of the stud is at 24 inches. And then the next one would be at 47 and a quarter, so that my, my stud is centered at 48, and then that's so my plywood will break on a stud with a four foot panel. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. As you can see, our uh, bottom plate's laid out now. And so we'll use some of these dimensions to lay out our top plate. When you're laying out a, an angled top plate or a rake top plate, uh, I, like to, I like to go off the short point uh, of everything. I don't know why, that's just what I've found to be the easiest. And so what you'll need to do is you'll need to find your run on each stud as you go down. So this first one is 10 and 3 eighths. And once again, I'm gonna use a calculator. Uh, you can use Pythagorean's theorem again, if you would like. Um, and I'm just gonna punch in 10 and 3 eighths inch run. So we end up with 11 and 19, 30 seconds here. And I'm just gonna do the same process for each stud. Now that the plates are laid out, we need to figure out the, the height of our studs and they're gonna get taller from, as they go from this end to that end. And I'll show you how to do that. So like I said, I like to work from the short point. So we're gonna figure out our shortest stud first. Um, the wall that our rake wall is tying into is five foot, six inches tall. So we'll start with that. And then we have to subtract our plates. An inch and a half for our bottom plate because it's just a standard two by four. And then an inch and 11 sixteenths for our top plate. If you see up here, um, if, if our two by four is an inch and a half this direction, when you cut it on a 612 pitch, this becomes an inch and 11 sixteenths because of the angle. So you have to back that off and that leaves you with five foot two and 13 sixteenths. So I'm gonna take that five foot two and 13 sixteenths and start at the, the short point of our wall. And I'm gonna convert that to 62 and 13 sixteenths uh, so we're not dealing with feet and inches. At this point, it's only inches, and I just find the math to be easier. Um, being a 612 pitch on this, on this roof makes it really easy because whatever number you come over, you have to come up half that amount. So, for example, this is going to be 10 and a quarter, which means that we add 5 and an eighth. So that would be 67 and 15 sixteenths if you add it to the original 62 and 13. So this, this is actually simpler than it seems. What you do is you take your dimension from here to the short point of your stud, divide it by two, and add it to the height of your shortest stud. And then you would, for the next stud, you'd do the same. You'd go from here, get this dimension, divide it by two, and add it to your original dimension. And you just do that all the way down. So now that we've got our stud lengths, we're going to head over and cut all of our studs. Now that we've got our studs cut, uh, we need to figure out the dimensions for our cripples, our sills, our trimmers, and our headers. Uh, I went ahead and put together this little sketch to show you uh, kind of how we have everything labeled. Now would be a great time to pause the video if you'd like to take a look at this farther in depth. I'm going to go ahead and cut, uh, cut all these parts and pieces so we can get this wall together. One thing I want to point out real quick is that our headers here and here above the door and window are two by fours. Normally when you frame, you'd use more of a beam, a four by six or a four by eight. 
but because this is a shed roof and we're gonna actually have a rafter that goes right on top of this, that will act as our header, so we don't need to have a header above the door and window themselves as well. Now that we got everything cut, we'll just put it together. Well, once it's all nailed together, it should look something like this. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something and it was fun. If you got any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments and we'll get to them as we can. And uh, stay tuned because the next video we're going to do is uh, laying out and cutting rafters for this building. So it'll tie right in. Thanks. Have a good one.